Welcome to the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Today is April 11th, the fourth work day of the week, the day we call a Wednesday on the Gregorian calendar. The day that the Lord calls the fourth work day, Daniel calls it in the midst of the week. That is proclaiming when Christ would die on the stake. But that's a long study and we won't get into that right now. So let's get right on over into the Lord's care ministry. A year to search for knowledge and truth. Day 102 of the year 2012. Today's study is about complete and effective divinity. Complete and effective divinity. Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down here in the corner, brethren, to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to open up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. And some of you may be getting tired of the way I open this about telling them to write down our chapter and verse and tell them where the pause button is. But we get new ones coming on periodically and I like to know let them know how we operate here. Okay, let's get right on over into complete and effective divinity. And to do that we're going to go to Romans chapter six and verse five. If we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also should be in the likeness of his resurrection. Co-resurrection. The proof that I have experienced crucifixion with Jesus is that I have a definite likeness to him. The Spirit of God through Jesus enter into me rearranges my personal life before God. The resurrection of Jesus has given him the authority to give the life of God the Father to me, and the experiences of my life must now be built on the foundation of his life. I can have the resurrection life of Jesus here and now, and it will exhibit itself through holiness. The idea all through the Apostle Paul's writing is that after the decision to be identified with Jesus in his death has been made, the resurrection of life of Jesus penetrates every bit of my human nature. It takes the omnipotence of God, the complete and effective divinity, to live the life of the Son of God in human flesh. The Holy Spirit of God cannot be accepted as a guest in merely one room of the house. He invades all of it. And once I decide that my old man, that is my heredity of sin, should be identified with the death of Jesus, the Spirit of God invades me. It takes charge of everything. My part is to walk in the light and to obey all that he reveals to me. Once I have made that important decision about sin, it is easy to reckon that I am actually dead indeed to sin because I find the life of Jesus in me all the time. That's Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Just as there is only one kind of humanity, there is only one kind of holiness. The holiness of Jesus. And it is his holiness that has been given to me. God puts the holiness of his son into me and I belong to a new spiritual order. Death no longer has dominion over him. 
the life that he lives, he lives to God. I pray to you, O Lord, to give me a ready sympathy with others that I may look at things from their standpoint and see myself as they see me. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Firmly I believe and truly in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, here we are in the midst of the week. Plenty of time to get down on your knees and repent. Brethren, that's what I suggest. Get down on your knees and repent from following the tradition of men. That make void the word of God. By you changing the Lord's Sabbath, by you getting rid of the God's holy days and accepting the traditional holidays of man. You have made void the word of God. And that leads you on that broad path of destruction. But you can ask the Father and the Son to put you on that narrow path that leads to the kingdom. And salvation, salvation with us, the Father and the Son forever. While you're on your knees, ask for the Spirit of the Father and the Son to come within you. Drive away all doubt. Strengthen that faith, brethren. And while you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of that love letter he sent to you. And that love letter is in your Holy Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. That means I have to go to the doctor and get blood pressure checked. It's been on the rise lately, and I've got to go get it fixed. So with that, bye for now.